Welcome to our Chapter 9 review video. Now, we're not going to cover all of the fine details of cellular respiration in this video. So if you need those, consult our Chapter 9 video series for the, the fine details. We're just going to cover some of the highlights. All right, first up is you need to be able to release the energy found in carbohydrates, specifically glucose, which is C6H12O6. And this is done through a three-step process called cellular respiration. Now, remember, cellular respiration is basically the same thing as aerobic respiration. And aerobic means that you're going to use oxygen. And in fact, we're going to use oxygen at the very last step. Now, there's three main steps when it comes to cellular respiration. Number one, glycolysis, which will occur on the cytoplasm. And then the next two steps are going to occur in the mitochondria. And that would be the Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain. Now, here's the overview of cellular respiration, and you're going to notice that this chemical equation up here at the top is almost identical to photosynthesis. The only difference is the products of photosynthesis, those are the reactants of cellular respiration, and the products of cellular respiration are going to be the reactants for photosynthesis. Now, you also want to notice here in the middle is that the whole purpose of cellular respiration is to produce ATP. And in fact, when you have aerobic conditions, in other words, oxygen is available, you're going to make on average about 36 ATP per glucose molecule. All right, look down here in this picture, and this is kind of like that last picture that we saw on the photosynthesis uh, video, where this is showing you each step and where they occur. So the first step is glycolysis. This is going to occur out into the cytoplasm. And during glycolysis, you're going to make three things. Number one is two molecules of ATP. That's just going to be used by the cell to do some work. You're going to create some high energy electrons in the form of NADH. Remember, NADH is an electron carrier. Those are going to move on to the electron transport chain inside the mitochondria. And then you're going to create pyruvate which will move into the mitochondria and go into the Krebs cycle. Now the Krebs cycle is going to occur in the matrix of the mitochondria. That's the very inside. And the Krebs cycle is going to do a couple of things. You're going to make some NADH and N or FADH. Those are also electron carriers. And you're also going to create uh, something that's not on this picture, but I'm going to draw it in for you, it is going to be some uh, carbon dioxide. So you have the waste product of CO2 being made in this step also. So all the carbon dioxide that you breathe out on a daily basis is going to be made through the Krebs cycle. All right, now what's also going to happen here is the electron transport chain has been collecting all of the um, high energy electrons in the form of NADH and FADH2 from the previous two steps. And it's going to go through a process called oxidative phosphorylation. And what that means is you're going to use oxygen to attach a phosphate to something. And that phosphate is going to be attached to ATP. Now if you look down here real close, you'll notice that this starburst with ATP is bigger because you're going to make most of those 36 ATP at this step. You don't really make a whole lot up here. So you're getting all of your bang for the buck at the end, and that's when you're going to use oxygen. All right, glycolysis, pretty simple. You're going to create uh, three things, uh, ATP, NADPH, and 2-pyruvic acid or pyruvate. And in the first step here, glucose is going to be chopped in half. It takes 2 ATP to make that happen, so we got to spend some energy to make some. In the next step, you're going to take these six carbon molecules, you're going to rearrange them into pyruvic acid, and once you rearrange them into pyruvic acid, you're going to create four molecules of ATP, so your net gain is going to be two ATP, so that's your profit. And you're also going to create some NADH, and then once again, those are going to take off and go to the electron transport chain. The pyruvic acid is going to move into the uh, mitochondria and it's going to go through what is called the Krebs cycle. Now the Krebs cycle is going to make one molecule of ATP, but the main thing it's going to make is going to be some NADH and some FADH2. Both of those carry high energy electrons that will go to the electron transport chain. And it's also going to make carbon dioxide, which will be the waste product that we breathe out. Now remember, the number one job of the Krebs cycle is to make more high energy electrons. So that's the NADH and the FADH2. All right. The electron transport chain's purpose is to take all those electrons made in the previous two steps 
and use those to make ATP. Now the movement of those electrons down the electron transport chain is going to pump uh, hydrogen ions across a membrane. That's going to create what is called a proton gradient. And then these protons or hydrogen ions are the same thing. They're going to pass through an enzyme called ATP synthase. And ATP synthase, just like the word itself is telling you, is going to make ATP. All right. How does all of this happen? Well, it happens through this picture here. So pull out your uh, paper and pen, and we're going to write all over this bad boy. Okay. Let's try a different color. All right, so here are these the NADH and the FADH2s, and what they've done is they've dropped off an electron, and then this electron is going to hop from protein to protein to protein to protein, and every time it hops from protein to protein, that energy is used to pump a hydrogen ion across this membrane, and you'll notice what we're making is a proton gradient. We have a high concentration of protons over here, or hydrogen ions. We have a low concentration over here. These guys want to diffuse back through this membrane. This will happen by going through this enzyme over here called ATP synthase. And every time it goes through ATP, ATP synthase, the bottom's going to click, and every click creates an ATP molecule. So imagine this thing going click, 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 click every second of your life to make ATP. All right, we do have a potential problem. You see this electron right here? If it doesn't hop off this chain, it's going to create a log jam. And since these electrons would not be moving, we would not be pumping these hydrogen ions across, and therefore we can't make ATP, and that would have severe consequences. So we have this guy right here, oxygen. This electron that's here is going to jump onto this oxygen, Oxygen, when it gains an electron, like all atoms, is going to become negative. Negative things are attracted to positive things. We have a lot of positive things around here. Those are those hydrogen ions. If you add hydrogen to oxygen, you're going to create water, and that's your waste product. All right. So think of oxygen as the final electron acceptor. All right. When we do not have oxygen available, we're going to go through what is called anaerobic respiration. And these are sometimes referred to as fermentation. And the fermentation is actually the second step of aerobic respiration. The first step is going to be glycolysis. And this glycolysis is going to operate just like it did when you were doing aerobic respiration. You're going to make ATP, you're going to make pyruvic acid, and you're going to create NADH. The problem is we don't have a mechanism that's going to recycle the NAD plus because we don't have the electron transport chain available. That's why we're going to go through the fermentation step. And fermentation comes in two flavors. We have alcohol fermentation where the pyruvic acid releases some carbon dioxide. That's why the champagne bubbles and the beer is going to foam. And this pyruvate is then going to be turned into ethanol, which is alcohol, and the step from going from pyruvate to alcohol is going to recycle the NAD+. Over here in lactic acid fermentation, the pyruvic molecule is turned into lactic acid, and during that process, you're going to recycle your NAD+. And this is the one that, does, that happens in our muscles, and it's the lactate that makes your muscles burn. All right, that's going to wrap up this video. Uh, remember, study well, go through these review videos, check out your notes. Uh, don't forget to uh, listen to some of the learning songs that we have on my big campus. And if you do all that, you should do really well on your test. So until our next menu, we're going to catch you on the flip side.